Jeremy Podesta, a fourth career DGA award nomination this year, including others for Game of Thrones in Pacific. He's nominated this year for Station Eleven in the finale, an unbroken circle. He's also a four-time Emmy nominee for Game of Thrones Pacific and Boardwalk Empire. Uh, and th- just incredible work here on Station Eleven. I wanted to start for the finale. Um, I want to kind of start at the end. You have the great reunion between Jeevan and Kirsten, and it's teased out in such a perfect fashion. I watched the show more than once and I, I I absolutely love it. And you kind of like are as the audience waiting for them to reunite. And then when they finally do, it's still a surprise. I, I just find the whole thing. It's like really well, you know what I mean? Like you're kind of expecting it to happen maybe earlier or later and then it happens and it's great. I, can you talk about how you approach shooting and like kind of that whole sequence of them coming back together, obviously after in the narrative decades apart? Yes. Well, I mean, I think you felt the, what you felt because there is a sort of near miss that happens a little bit earlier and you think oh god they're not going to meet like the expectation is like so much that they are and then it's like we kind of do that little trick for the audience and we make them think that maybe it's actually not going to happen um but it had to happen <laughs> i think you couldn't really do this show and like not bring these two people together and um i think the trick to the whole thing was you know it's with all these kinds of emotional scenes it's like always balancing that thing of like genuine emotion real feeling with anything that might feel overly contrived or overly or overdetermined or overplayed and i think you know it's subtlety is what it's all about and you know i think the audience i knew that the audience would want to see these two come together and i know that i had these two amazing actors you know mackenzie davis and, and himesh patel who are just brilliant and so you know we we had talked about it in the abstract before the actors and, and myself, but you know, we didn't really go too deep into what they were gonna do in that moment. I just really told them how I wanted to shoot it and the simplicity of it. It's really shot quite simply. Um, and then they just did what they did, you know, and that was like the magic. There was no direction required really when it came to that. <laughs> the direction was really in creating the moment, the environment around the moment. And I think it has to do a lot with um, Deborah Cox singing Midnight Train to Georgia with, um, you know, with, we call them the, the Station 11 pips behind her. And it's, you know, it was like, th- there's something so soulful and beautiful and sweet and sad about the setup to this. And also what precedes us in the thing is um, Kirsten's character meeting the young girl who's part of the, the kids who, who might be blowing up the, the airport. And there's this, and then these kind of all this beautiful emotional stuff with Miranda and, finding out what happened with her and the pilot and the airplane. There's like, there's a, the, the, one of the really challenging things with this episode, just to go slightly off this point, is that it's emotional thing after emotional thing after emotional thing. And it's the play, Hamlet, and what happens with the characters there who are kind of sort of acting out the psychodrama of their lives through the words of Hamlet. And, you know, it's, there's so many scenes that have emotional um, qualities in them that are really significant that when you, you know, the, the sort of peak of them is the reunion of Kirsten and Jeevan, but the whole thing is calibrated. I mean, that's really what it's about. I think if, if all the rest of the scenes before were not emotionally calibrated, you wouldn't feel what you feel by the time that happens. And so it's really about kind of sustaining a kind of emotional swell, you know, through the entire back half of the, the episode. Right. And I haven't really done anything like that before. Like it's, I've never worked on a show that was so purely emotional and that had to ride this way for so long. Like normally you have a thing and it builds you know, a movie or a show and it builds up to one emotional peak. And if you get there, you're lucky and you have that emotion and then it's gone. This was like, you have this emotion, huge. Then you have that other huge emotion and then you have this huge and then you have this even bigger. And so I think that kind of, that calibrating all of that was really the challenge of the whole thing. And, um, you know, some of it's in the editing is just sort of how you build all that stuff. But a lot of it is in the performances and writing and the way you shoot it. And, you know, and I, and I'm so, so pleased with the show. I mean, I hate, I hate to be pleased when somebody says they cried or they watched something that I did, but it's like, you know, people tell me all the time that they let me weep through the whole last 20 minutes of the show. And I think that that's, you know, a kind of tribute to the writing, to the, to the performances, to everything that, that the show is that it can do this thing, which is almost impossible. Like I, you know, I didn't even believe you could sustain a level of emotionalism that, you know, that long and make it work for an audience. But I think it works. Yeah, definitely. It definitely does. It is incredibly an emotional show. I I would agree. I did cry a ton watching it. The other thing, I mean, you have this great, 
I guess I want to ask you this is something you said there, you know, kind of sustaining the emotions, but not making it contrived or making it feel manipulative. And you have this incredible, on top of all that, you have this great score by Dan Romer and the music is unbelievable. And you're kind of like, I feel like if the show is just half as, if the show wasn't as good as it is and it still had that music, it would still be like, oh, this is like emotional. But the fact that it kind of like is so incredible in the performances and everything you're saying, I guess for, how do you think, how did you kind of think about the music and like how you would work with it? And like knowing you have that killer score in your back pocket, I guess, like it, especially in the scenes there and especially, I guess, I think in, in the Hamlet, when they're kind of acting on Hamlet, it's diegetic, right? Like they're playing it on like they're the, 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 well, they're not, they're not actually playing it, but it's, okay. Okay. It's, okay. It, it is, there is, there is the, the symphony is performing, right. But you know, so it does sort of take over at a certain point. And, um, well, for I have to say, Dan is just a genius. I mean, he's absolutely one of the most amazing composers that I've ever met. Certainly, one of the most amazing I've ever worked with. And I, I just cry when I hear his music. I just, it's so moving, but not cheaply moving. I mean, it's, it's mm-hmm. in a complex, earned way moving. And he, it just adds so much to those scenes. Like I can't even tell you. Like I mean, they're moving on the, on their own. Like you know, everybody was crying on set when we were filming that scene, and there was no music. And mm-hmm. You know, so obviously the performers were giving it and the scene just, you know, was earning it. But that music with that, you know, you know, music can kill a scene. Like you can take real emotion that can be killed by music. And, you know, but you, you can't really fix something with music. But when music merges in that way, like if you just have this really sophisticated approach to music and the scene has its own emotional value, the compound effect of that is just enormous. And mm-hmm. I think Dan, it's such a sensitive human being and such a sensitive artist that he's incapable of doing something cheap or maudlin or manipulative or it's just not in his DNA at all. And so, you know, when I heard the music that he was do- like, I didn't hear the music for that until after we shot it. Okay. Um, although other time, I did hear the music for the symphony and other things, but, you know, that particular score, I think maybe, you know, we, it came Score things. Score pieces came through at various times. I don't remember when I heard that for the first time. That music for that reunion, but certainly when I saw it together, it was just devastating. Like I, yeah, I couldn't continue. You, you mentioned the, the performances are obviously right. unbelievable. I wanted to ask about Daniel Deadweiler plays Miranda. Like you said, this is like a big episode for her and kind of like tying in like a little bit of what happened. The scene when she's talking to the airline pilot who's named Hugo. I just again, it takes my breath away. And there's a moment. And the line reading she has, like, he's like, these people don't deserve to die like animals, basically, is what he's saying, and trapped in the plane. And she's like, no, they don't. And it's, that's it. And, like, that's what she says. And I think there's so many ways that could have been played and probably shot. And the way you guys handle that is just unbelievable. I just could not believe it. I guess, can you talk about that moment and, like, kind of how you guys talked about her response there and that conversation? Because I think it's such a, it's so, it's so, uh, I don't know, it just is so, like, heartbreaking and like real it felt I, it just is a really amazing moment in the episode well i have to give it to patrick somerville who's a writer who just i mean it's the most they're the most beautiful words like that whole speech that conversation with her and the pilot it's so heartbreaking and i you know it's devastating i i, I mean i keep saying this but I, i'm still cry when i watch it like her performance those words you know, that was actually one of the first things we shot for the entire episode, just because of scheduling. You know, we the 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 whole episode was shot out of order. And, you know, and also because it's like a few movies in one, you know, we have Danielle's story, Miranda's story is kind of its own self-contained thing within the body of the show, her in the hotel room with Tim Simons and, you know, it's, and then her, you know, going off into entering her comic world after this talk with the pilot, it's its own little story within the larger scope of the show. So anyway, we end up shooting her at all the hotel room with her quite early, which included that conversation with the pilot. And, you know, we had cast the pilot, but we hadn't shot the pilot yet either. So it was the first, when we came to do that scene, I hadn't seen him really act yet, the pilot. And he was just off camera doing his dialogue, but he gave such an honest, sincere, off camera dialogue performance. It was such a surprise in a way, because, you know, you always think, well, we can do his side of things later and we're going to, so, but we, but he was there when we shot it. I just didn't expect it to be as moving as it actually was. Like he was moving, she was unbelievable. And, you know, we just shot this and I don't know, I, I just can't even explain it. We just like, as we were shooting it and then Danielle just does what she does, which is just perform in the most honest, beautiful, real way 
and just letting her, letting it flow, letting their emotions rise to the surface. And when she just did it, I don't think it was a dry eye in the house. I mean, honestly, like the entire crew was weeping. It was just unbelievable. And, and of course, it's not, you didn't, it's not just one take, <laughs> we, but there weren't many because it was so great, but there were a couple of different sizes and things that we had to do. And I, I definitely didn't want to, I mean, it was every time it was perfect. There was no question of like, I mean, maybe there were small notes. I don't even remember, but you know, her instincts are just impeccable. And so, you know, it was just getting the camera in the right place, getting the lighting right, getting it all working. And then our off-camera actor, our pilot was so beautiful and she just connected to him, you know, and it was just, a beautiful, be just a beautiful, beautiful moment. Uh, I don't know what to say, but it was definitely one of those most magical things ever. Like when you're, when you're honest, and I've had some of those in my life, I've been blessed with those, but this is one of them where it's just, you forget you're making a show, you forget everything. And you're just like, you're in it. And you're just watching this actor play this part. And she, and she became that person. And what she was going through was so moving. I'm going to, I'm going to cry just talking about it. It's it, just, <laughs> it's the situation too. It's like, she, you know, she's dying. It's her last word. She's saving these, or, or she's trying to save these people that she cares about. It's like, it's the whole situation is so loaded and so kind of fraught. And, you know, that it's, it was just one of those great things to witness, honestly. Yeah, I mean the show is absolutely amazing. It's a remarkable, uh, I think, artistic achievement and and a well deserved nomination. Jeremy Podesta, a DGA nominee this year for Station Eleven and the finale, Unbroken Circle. But the entire show is just a beautiful show. <laughs> you should watch it, including the the finale. Finale. Thank you, Jeremy, so much for doing this. Thank you so much.